Net zero. Net zero. Net zero. Net zero. What does that mean? Nobody knows. We hear the phrase net zero a lot, and it sounds like a simple enough concept. But if we balance the amount of carbon released into the atmosphere with what gets absorbed back into the air, then the world will stop heating. But since the discovery that excess CO2, largely caused by all of our emissions for hundreds of years, is the main culprit, we've not made a lot of progress sorting this out. One of the reasons for this is relatively simple. We are deluding ourselves that nature is going to save us by taking advantage of a loophole in the Paris Agreement. It's making it look like we're meeting net zero, when in reality, it's driving us further away. The problem with net zero is that when world leaders agreed to it by signing the Paris Agreement, it was open to interpretation as to how we were actually going to do it. This openness allows countries to offset their human carbon emissions against natural carbon capture. When we talk about human-made emissions, we mean all the carbon that comes from things like food, transport, housing, industry, and so on. The problem is that nature also produces huge amounts of CO2 emissions on its own from things like natural forest fires and volcanic eruptions. Now, without the human-made emissions, nature would find a way to capture the naturally produced CO2 through carbon sinks like oceans, forests, and soils. And that's the crucial difference between humans and nature. Humans have no way of keeping our carbon emissions in balance yet. Because although we have some advancements in carbon dioxide removal technology, removing megatons of CO2 in 2030, they don't really work at all yet. What this means is there are two different systems and scientists stress we should keep them separate because if we don't, you end up with an imagined scenario like this. The independent republic of It's Complicated is lucky enough to have a beautiful guardian rainforest, which can absorb 200 units of CO2. It also has the active volcano of Mount Greenfield, which emits 150 units of natural CO2. The human population also emits 100 units of CO2. When you combine both systems, things get muddled. In the best case scenario, where you account for all activity, it looks like we, the humans, have added only a small amount of human-made CO2 to the atmosphere. In the worst case scenario, where the government doesn't include natural CO2, you end up with an overly optimistic and very inaccurate picture of what is really going on, which in reality is much worse. If we keep the two systems separate, as scientists want us to do, it's clear what we all have to do. We need to reduce our emissions to zero or find a way to humanly remove CO2 from the atmosphere or a combination of the two. Our current way of combining both systems can make it look like we are well on our way to achieving net zero without actually having changed anything at all. Take any country in the Amazon rainforest. Strictly speaking, they should not be taking any credit at all for the natural carbon removal the rainforest makes every year. But many do, offsetting their carbon emissions against one of Earth's giant carbon sinks. And what's worse is that by not getting human-made CO2 emissions under control, we are damaging carbon sinks. And we need these to be healthy to keep temperatures in balance. We won't be able to do it without them. See, nature currently removes around half of our emissions from the atmosphere, but the rate at which we're heating the planet is putting those systems under stress, making it harder and harder for them to function. Take this huge forest. Finland has been relying on it for decades to reach ambitious net zero targets. But from about 2010, the amount of CO2 it absorbed started to decline, slowly at first, then rapidly. Some of this is because they're cutting down trees for wood and energy, but climate change itself has also started to destroy this huge carbon sink. This means that despite cutting emissions by 43% across all other sectors, net emissions in Finland are about the same level as they were in the early 1990s. It's cancelled out 30 years of progress towards Finland's net zero target in just a few years. The longer we play accounting games with net zero, the bigger our real carbon debt becomes. Today, scientists are urging countries to follow a single definition of net zero, geological net zero, which means no more borrowing from nature and taking full responsibility for our own emissions. Countries need to do three things. One, focus on reducing and eliminating CO2 emissions. Two, protect nature, so carbon sinks can continue working. And three, some scientists say we should invest in creating carbon removal technologies that permanently take carbon out of the atmosphere. If we aren't honest, we could hit net zero on paper, 
but the planet would keep getting warmer. Thank you for watching. For more stories that go beyond the headlines, subscribe down below and we'll see you back next time.